So this is just a quick video. I'm going to replace the gaiters here on my friend Tim's 1968 BSA Thunderbolt. And as you can see, the rubbers here are looking a little rough around the edges. They're all perished. So here you can see they've just come loose here. It's not, not a problem, but they're split. It kind of just detracts from the overall look of the bike. The springs underneath look uh, pretty nice at first glance. Here on the other side, they've also split as well, so I'm going to replace those. And I've got the uh, the MGO specials. They're very nice. You know, I can't fault them, to be honest. It's not a show bike, so they're obviously a lot more flexible. The rubber here where it's gone pretty stiff. You know, maybe it was better quality in the beginning, but these are a lot lighter, but... Um, the concertina ring very nice, so yeah, I'll go ahead and replace those. The first job is to slacken everything off while the wheel is still on the ground to get some leverage, so I'll first slacken off the axle nut and then start um, slackening off some of these mudguard or fender stay brackets so that everything's loose and then I'll lift the front wheel off the ground in order to remove the front wheel and then remove the mud guard and the stays and then uh, what I'm going to do is then just literally pull those old gaiters down over the forks and then reinsert the new gaiters. Well there's quite a collection of different fittings on this bike actually throughout the whole bike. Um, we've got acorn nut nuts all over the place and so um, these mud guard stays are half inch uh, so I'll go with that and this pinch bolt here I thought it would be a Whitworth's socket at 5 16 but you can see it's just a little slack so what I'm going to do is go with a 15 millimeter instead which is a much tighter fit yeah I think I'll go with that instead so I'm starting with the mudguard stays Just slackening those off. I don't know how tight they were. Just getting those slack for when the wheel comes off. Well, I'm not sure how standard this stay bar is here. These, this doesn't look standard. Um, but anyway, and of course, with every what seems to be every nut and bolt on this bike, it's um, significantly over tightened. So uh, they are uh, half an inch again as well. So a uh, little brute force to get these loose, but the top one was fine. I worked that a little bit, but the, the, the bottom one, I needed to uh, get the mallet out just to give that a tap. I suspect someone got really frustrated with this bike over the years. Uh, you wouldn't believe some of the nuts and bolts that were so over tight. Uh, they damaged a lot. Um, and there's one example, the left hand foot peg. You may know that that's a left hand thread. Uh, so obviously what when you seem like you're tightening it up, you're actually slackening it off and vice versa. And um, it looked like someone had actually got so frustrated that the nut wouldn't come off that they kept on pulling and pulling and pulling when what they were doing is they were actually tightening the nut. Can you imagine instead of slacking it, they were tightening it and they sheared the whole thing off in the end. So anyway, that's that for now. And... Uh, just to loosen things up for when the wheel comes off.
next I'll work on the brake. So just loosening off the brake cable to remove it here down below and all I'm going to do is just slacken that off, turn this, that'll loosen off the cable you'll see the, the, the brake lever at the bottom is slackening off and then hopefully there'll be enough give in the cable at the bottom that I should be able to just pull it out of here. There we go. And so that's essentially the brake removed and then we'll just take it off from here. My hands aren't too much in the way of the camera. So we'll have to readjust the cable of course at the end of this. When this all goes back on but no problem at all. I'll check the brake as well while this wheel's off, just to make sure that the shoes are in good nick. And finally the pinch bolt, using this 15mm socket. Thankfully, that wasn't too tight. There's no nut on the other end of this. Okay, and then ready to remove the axle. Here I'm going to remove the axle using just a, a bar steel. Actually, it's a, um, a socket, a homemade socket, actually, that my um, father-in-law had made when he was an apprentice at uh, Sheffield Steel. Um, long time ago but uh, he told me how he would used to heat up the bar and then bang it over a nut you know while it was still red hot in order to make these spanners uh, special spanners for certain tools and equipment at the uh, the foundry and the works where he he spent a lot of a lot of time as a young man Is this left hand thread? Because that's got tighter. I think it is. Yes indeed, it's a left hand thread. So as you can see, what would normally seem like tightening is actually slackening. Um, my Triumph, of course, it doesn't have a thread that goes into the fork leg like this and uh, you see the forks pull apart there yeah I think the previous owner would have just whacked this with a hammer <laughs> so just using my hands until we get to the point where we can feel it loosen off also careful I don't nick this paintwork as well with this tool With the axle pulled back, uh, not completely though, I, I want the wheel to stay inside the forks. I'll lift the front end up now and then uh, remove this wheel.
Now that I know that the wheel will drop out easily, I'm just finally removing these uh, stay bars here. I suppose I could have done that earlier completely, but uh, I just wanted to make sure that the wheel was going to drop out. this doesn't bang that paintwork there I'll be careful when I take the wheel off as well that it doesn't flick around and bang this as well I hope the bikes high enough and we'll soon see Tricky little bugger. And that's it. Okay, so now to remove the front mud guard. I hope it'll drop through when I remove those bottom stays, but uh, you never know. I've, on my Triumph, um, it's not possible. You've got to take the whole thing apart, the stays at the top as well, so that that fender can sort of twists sideways and then pull out so we'll see Good. That's good. Okay, nice. That saves having to take all the other nuts and bolts apart at the top of the mudguard because then you've got to realign everything as well, which isn't too bad, but I'd rather not have to bother with that. So, okay, so the forks are now um, bare and exposed. I'm just going to pull those gaiters down and lube up the new gaiters and then push those back on. What I might just do is check the fork seals and everything while I'm while I've got this off. with them a little. Oh. Come on, little fuckers. There we go. I'll cut them off if, if they don't come off. And then getting them over this bracket here. Yeah. So when I put the, the new ones on, I'll make sure that they're super soft. I'll I'll leave them in nice warm water for a little while or some oil or something. There we go. Just a little tricky getting over that lip there. This this was the tricky bit getting them over that, but yeah, watch, they may even split through. Nope. Yeah, I think they've had it. 
it kind of just adds a nice touch to the front of this bike. It should look nice and clean and there we go. I'll give this all a good clean up as well before I put the new ones on. The forks look like they're indecent, the stanchions look like they're pretty decent. I don't see any rust, just a little tarnished from the spring effect, but uh, anyway, that's good. And uh, forks look to be in decent condition. I'm not gonna try and mess with them while it's still on the stand, but uh, anyway, that's one off. them off first. I guess I could put that. something under there. I just don't want to uh, scratch that chrome. Come on. You can tell where it's trying to just get over that lip. I can feel it. There's probably some Super easy technique of doing this, but I think I'm all right. I'm just ripping this. See if I can work it from the top. Sorry, this seems a bit painful to watch. There we go. I'll just roll it over. There we go. It's actually kind of stuck. That's the problem. There we go. That got it. Got it, Lucy. There we go. Bloody hell! Pin in the butt. All right. That's the hard part. <laughs> 